thank you chairpersons and i thank the organizers of isa kerala for giving me this opportunity the next 15 minutes i'll talk about an upcoming interesting topic which is the use of a supraglottic airway for upper ga endoscopies so all of us will agree that uh, giving sedation by anesthesia in the scopy room uh, is not without challenges it can be because of multitude of factors like uh, anesthetic factors which is shared airway limited access to the airway the position or obstruction of the airway with either a dislodged teeth tongue being pushed back by the bite block or by the endoscope itself there are patient factors like extremes of age the high risk of the patients involved like obesity anemia bleeding and cardiorespiratory comorbidities and sometimes ascites uh, often we require deep sedation to suppress the gag reflex for endoscope insertion uh with the growing pandemic uh, of obesity uh, we have patients with sleep apnea which is much more prone for airway obstruction when you give deep sedation it can result in respiratory depression apnea and hypoxia and if the patient has got hiatus hernia achalasia gerd you have the risk of uh, reflex which results in laryngospasm and cough there are certain environmental and human factors involved uh, primarily because it is non operating room anesthesia some of us are forced to work with uh, improper anesthesia equipment sometimes uh, only a bane circuit uh, there is lack of monitors especially with uh, uh, enteral carbon dioxide monitoring often the ambient light is low uh, and there is a, a human factors like we have to do a huge number of patients with a faster turnaround time and uh, when you do uh, with a, a ercp and uscope the diameter is larger so if i summarize these three slides we uh, the main challenges is the risk of airway obstruction the need for deep sedation and suboptimal um, anesthesia equipment so uh, at the moment most of us handle uh, these cases or supplement oxygenation with the help of a nasal cannula uh, and pre oxygenation okay but if you are in a situation where the patient is in apnea or has an airway obstruction nobody none of us will want to tell the surgeon to take out the scope especially after he reaches a crucial position so um, uh, if you have to supplement a higher fio2 or a, make sure that the airway is patent the our options are limited um, increasing the uh, uh, flow with nasal cannula can be done for some time but it's not always full proof and there is chance of mucosal drying and epistaxis with higher flows thrive has an option uh, advantage of giving humidified oxygen and it's like a ventilatory exchange but the cost availability and the fact that you need an obstructed airway to for the thrive to work is a disadvantage the other option is procedural oxygenation mask which will again give a higher fio2 but it doesn't do anything to the obstructed airway so let us look at the evidence so that is uh, from our experience but this is uh, the evidence reported incidence of adverse effects in upper ga scopies is about 1 200 and hypoxia is about uh, 10 to 50% in endoscopy cases so when we say that the reported incidence is 10 to 50 you should understand that the actual incidence may be much higher the cardiorespiratory complications happen in the range of 5 to 9.3 per 1000 endoscopies this is something which nobody will want to have it in the endoscopy area so if you look at the uh, american patient safety federation's vision that no patient shall be harmed by anesthesia it is time for us to think about a safe airway device uh, for upper ga endoscopy so the requirement of such a device will be something which will offer patient comfort and safety separate endoscopy and airway access adequate oxygenation and etc to monitor so basically an unobstructed airway and reduction complication and rapid recovery so this probably uh, may dr skinner think about uh, something like an lma gastro with cuff pilot technology so this is the first laryngeal mask which is specifically designed to help clinician to maintain the patient's airway while uh, during endoscopy under general anesthesia so it offers all the advantages like carbon dioxide monitoring you can give a higher fio2 it maintains the airway and uh, the, uh, because all these things are done there is less risk of cardiorespiratory complications the silicon cuff is atraumatic and because it has got a cuff pilot technology it prevents uh, complications of hyperinflation air leak and nerve palsies so if you look at the uh, design and uh, features it has got a separate uh, gastroscope uh, channel it has got a separate airway channel 
and it has got a silicon cuff uh, which is soft it comes with a inbuilt um, holder to hold the lma in place and this uh, rubber tubing uh, or uh, fixing uh, thing is also available and it has got an integrated uh, bite block which will protect the uh, uh, gastroscope from uh, injury so if the in this is the intended position so if the intended position is correct it is just like a normal lma the tip of the lma should rest again the upper esophageal sphincter sizing is no different uh, it's available only for adult sizes what i will say is even if the child is bigger uh, don't uh, try to put a lma3 you can do it but if you're going to do an ercp you may have problems with a uh, because there is less uh, uh, oropharyngeal sp space uh, so um, uh, the uh, required into in this incisor gap is 24 for a size 3 and 28 for size 4 and 5 so uh, the manufacturer claims that uh, you can put a 14 millimeter scope, but thankfully our endoscopes which are available, US and ERCP scope are 13 millimeter. So if you look at the uh, evidences, there is uh, published uh, literature available to uh, support the use of in upper GI procedures, ERCP um, uh, and uh, transesophageal echo and a certain uh, uh, other procedures uh, or situations like COVID-19 era. But uh, there is still a lack of uh, proper uh, randomized control studies. So we have been using uh, this uh, for the last uh, eight months. And we actually going to uh, do a prospective study uh, or we are actually in the process of doing a prospective study. Uh, we have crossed about 40 cases now. We have predominantly done gastroscopies and uh, about uh, 15 ERCPs and po poems. So when you do a gastroscopy, we normally do a uh, propofol fentanyl induction followed by uh, maintaining the patient. Mostly we maintain the patient spontaneously with uh, either sevoflurane or total intravenous anesthesia. When you do uh, a longer procedures like ERCP, uh, we uh, start with fentanyl and propofol again and we give one dose of atracurium and then maintain the patient on TIVA versus isoflurane depending on the anesthetist convenience. For the study purpose, we are maintaining them on TIVA. So the intro malpositions are one. It happened during the initial part of the study where we were uh, 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 not uh, careful, uh, too careful about the cuff pressures. The desaturation uh, has not happened and the recovery time is quite fast. Most of the patients wake up, uh, gastroscopies wake up immediately uh, when they pull out the gastroscope, but ERCPs may take about uh, four to five minutes. So when you talk about the effectiveness of a uh, LMA gastro, we need to talk both for uh, from our, our perspective and an endoscopist perspective. Uh, so, because it's a, a study, uh, we are uh, allowing the residents and the junior consultant to use it. Anybody uh, who has uh, uh, sufficient experience with LMA Supreme or an AMBO aura can uh, participate in the study. So, um, uh, the overall insertion success is 98 percentage. First attempt success is 90. You may wonder why, because when we use uh, LMA with um, um, without muscle paralysis, uh, sometimes the jaw may be a bit tight, so we may have to deepen and then uh, put it rather than forcing it. So that is the reason why it's about 90 percentage. And while otherwise the ease of insertion is uh, quite good. Uh, when you talk about the insertion of a uh, endoscope through the integrated channel, the overall insertion success rate is quite good, 98 percentage. But first attempt success rate is 93. This is because when you do a gastroscope, we have got 100% success rate. But if you're doing an ERCP and EUS, um, uh, our success rate is less. So this is because when the surgeon is, uh, or the endoscope is faces a bit of resistance, we don't want to blindly push. So we take it out, look with a uh, gastroscope and then introduce, make sure that it is in perfect alignment and then introduce. Otherwise, ease of insertion uh, for a gastroscope is very high. ERCP scope, uh, the uh, can be resistance. So I will explain to you why we get, why we get a resistance, which will help you uh, to uh, um, explain uh, to your endoscope is also. So uh, indications is when you are dealing with a sick patient whom you don't want to intubate and you want to uh, give a balanced anesthesia. Um, but contraindications are somebody with a radiotherapy to the neck, uh, somebody with an inadequate mouth opening. Uh, when someone is full stomach or somebody has got a reduced pulmonary compliance. So these are co common sense. So the first and foremost thing is preparing the endoscope channel. 
okay so uh, we need to ideally use a medical grade silicon because this has got a silicon tubing and the um, endoscope is again has got a rubberized coating so if you move rubber against rubber you will have resistance so you need to have a, a silicon based lubricant spray if, but unfortunately it is not available in india so we use either a, a water based lubricant like um, um, uh, lignocaine jelly but when if you are going to use a lignocaine jelly um, uh, there is a warning or caution from the manufacturer because it will suppress the uh, airway reflex so the patient may be at risk of aspiration so but that is an individual choice coming to the insertion technique it's uh, it's uh, exactly same like a normal lma but the manufacturer describes uh, to uh, compress the distal end between index finger and the thumb so that the tip is facing slightly anteriorly or curved slightly anteriorly insertion technique is the same uh, the only difference is that we don't blindly inflate uh, with 20 ml or 30 ml uh, we titrate the volume to get a uh, cuff pressure about 40 to 60 centimeters. So that is something which is very important. I'll explain to that again. So after insertion, the LMA also uh, pops up a bit. You just connect it to the breathing circuit, make sure that you are able to get a good ETCO2, no leak. Once this is done, you fix the uh, holder to one of these grooves between the maximum and minimum. So in such a way that it is flush with the patient's lips, but not uh, compressing the patient's lips. Once this is done, uh, the tape which is passed behind the patient's head is used to uh, fix the uh, LMA gastro. So this is an excellent innovation because uh, it, there is hardly any LMA movement even when you're using a tight scope. So that is um, quite good. As this is something which I mentioned, uh, the cuff pressure should be always in the 40 to 60 centimeter range. Uh, this is, uh, it offers a continuous monitoring um, especially when you're using uh, nitrous oxide. So um, this, this is a very important take home message, never over inflate the cuff. So correct position, uh, before I hand over the patient uh, to the endoscopist, I'll make sure that I am getting a very good ETCO2 waveform, okay, square waveforms with, and I'm able to generate six to eight ml per kg tidal volume with less than 20 centimeter airway pressure. There should be no leak and no gurgling sounds. So once I'm happy with that position, 99.9% uh, uh, the tip of the LMA will be against the upper esophageal sphincter. So these first three steps we are completed. The last step is the insertion of the gastroscope. So uh, this is, again, I said, if there is uh, anything which is wrong, you should troubleshoot at this particular point uh, before you hand over. So inadequate depth of anesthesia is a common reason for malposition, which we should avoid. Similarly, overinflation of the cuff can result in problem like the LMA getting uh, uh, curved and entering the uh, glottis, which will produce irritation and cough. So this is one major problem that is resistance to gas endoscope insertion. So again, inadequate lubrication of the endoscope is a major problem. Gross overinflation of the cuff uh, can result in difficulty. Uh, excessive flexion can produce crimping of the airway in the endoscope and malpositions. So these are the reasons why you are likely to have resistance. So it is important to understand the relative sizes. Uh, the gastroscope has got a tip uh, facing camera and it is only nine millimeters. So it passes very easily. EUS scope is 13 millimeters, similarly ERCP scope. The EUS scope has um, a oblique facing camera and the ERCP scope as a side facing camera. So uh, when you look at this particular video, you can realize that the uh, initial part of LMA insertion, this lumen is uh, perfectly circular. But as it goes in, you can see that uh, in the oropharynx, it becomes uh, oval. So this is one of the reasons why you have a bit of resistance. Endoscopist has to understand that this is one of the reasons and uh, once you ne negotiate it past, you will enter the esophagus without uh, difficulty. So uh, second thing is a uh, case we are going to describe is a EUS scope. So you can uh, see that this is uh, a round part of the uh, bite block. Once you go down, EUS scope, uh, sorry, uh, the gastroscope with the um, uh, band around has a diameter of 13 millimeter. Okay, so we are having a bit of resistance here. So what we do is we deflate the cuff. So when we are deflating the cuff, you can see that it yields 
and uh, we can pass it much more comfortably. So a transient deflation of the curve is a good option. So uh, the next uh, thing what we are going to describe is how you pass a gastroscope. So you can see that the lubrication we are using a lignocaine jelly and uh, you can see that uh, without no, with no movement, it passes into the uh, 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 gastroscope very easily or the LMA channel very easily. You can, see, you can see that it is entering the esophagus without any difficulty, without any manipulation. But what is important here is to understand that when you're doing an ERCP scope, things are slightly different. Till about 20 centimeter, we are not seeing any identifiable structures. So you can see that we are seeing only the blue, but in real life, if you are intubating the patient or the patient is, doesn't have a tube, surgeon can see the back of the tongue as well as uh, the uh, 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 vocal cord apparatus with the 30 degree scope. So there is one problem uh, with the ERCP scope. So now we'll overinflate the cuff deliberately. So in uh, once you overinflate the cuff, you will realize that uh, there is a significant resistance. Okay, it's not moving. So that is an important thing. So never overinflate the cuff. So tip for successful placement is to ensure that you have an a correctly placed LMA. Don't overinflate the cuff. It should be in neutral position. Uh, and this is one practical advice. So trust of the endoscopist is extremely crucial. They are taught not to push against resistance. So you should probably do gastroscopy till the time they are comfortable. Uh, they should be confident that the tip of the LMA is in alignment. Okay, so you can uh, get over minor uh, difficulties with good lubrication and deflating the cuff. These are my references. Thank you.